Alright, chapter 9, net ionic equations. This is from the beginning of the chapter, page 133 through 141, examples 9a and 9b. You have to remember your definitions to be good at this, because a lot of these words will give you hints in the problems and it'll help. Soluble means dissolved in water. Insoluble means it will not dissolve in water. A precipitate is an insoluble ionic compound. So it's an ionic compound that does not dissolve in water. And to dissociate means to split up into individual ions. Okay? Remember your states of matter and what they look like within the uh, uh, writing of a balanced equation. S is solid. G is gas, L is liquid, and AQ is aqueous, or dissolved in water. So that's aqueous. Okay. A net ionic equation. Remember, net is like the results after everything has been whittled down to its smallest bit. The net ionic equation only shows the part of the reaction that changes from reactant to product. We only look at the changes in this reaction, okay? And the spectator ion is the part of the four ionic equation that does not change at all, doesn't change its state of matter, and so it can be eliminated to leave you with the net ionic equation. Okay, so we're going to do two problems first with a pause, and then we'll do two more problems with a pause. So here are the first two. very much like problems are going to be asked uh, in exams. Write the, net ionic, write the net ionic equation when, for A, solutions of PbNO3 2 and KBr are mixed and a precipitate of PbBr2 forms. And then for number B, LiOH solution and Hi solutions are mixed and H2O liquid forms. Okay, so those are your problems, so go ahead and hit pause, and when you come back, hopefully you'll be right, and we'll show you how to go about going through and getting the problem done. All right, hit pause. All right, you're back. Good. All right, so, solutions of. Solutions of. Solutions. Dissolved in solution. Solutions of PbNO32 and KBr, these are two ionic compounds that dissociate, are ionic compounds that split up into their individual ions. Can you look at this and write the individual ions? That would be very helpful if you could. You may not be able to tell lead and what it is off the periodic table after all. Lead is here. Okay, lead is here. It's on this side of the stair steps, which means it's a metal, which means it has a, a charges on ions that you can't predict. So you can't tell with that. NO3 is a polyatomic ion. Do you remember what the charge is on an ion? That's NO3, a nitrate ion. If you do, that's great. If you don't, you might be in some trouble but I'm telling you, I'm going to take care of you. The problem is going to have at least one that you ought to know. Both of these you should know. KBr has K, which is in group 1A. So you know that should make a charge of plus 1. And if K is a plus 1, that other Br, which is in group 7a, which has 7 electrons in its outer shell, it's going to want to make a minus 1, right? So, you know for sure that the k likes to be a plus 1 and the br likes to be a minus 1. Alright. Precipitate. What does that mean? Precipitate is that insoluble ionic compound. So, if that forms, that basically says that that's the only thing that forms. So we can stick PBBr2 over here on this side. Okay. You know that one of the solutions is from here, 
And since there's no K pluses on this side, that would be a spectator ion, which means BR as the minus one ion has to be over here, which means you have to have the PB over here. Okay, so PBs from this solution and BR minuses from this solution combined to make this. If we had one of those, you'd need one lead and two bromines, right? That's what that two BR means, right? So remember, whenever we're balancing these guys, they have to be balanced for atoms, two BRs, two BRs, one PB, one PB, and for charge. Every ionic compound has a zero charge, right? So if that has a zero charge, this has to be a zero charge on this side. If there's two of these BR minus ones, this has to even out to be a plus two, right? Plus two, plus two times minus one is zero. Even that was zero. And now looking back here, you remember that a nitrate is a minus one ion, and there's two of them. So the lead has to be a plus two. Can you see where you can work your way backwards to get a charge that you're not sure of? Or if you know both, the PV plus twos come from the first solution, the BR minuses come from the second. They combine in a one to two ratio to make that solid. That's the net ionic equation. It's not too bad. Let's take a look at the second one. Okay, lithium hydroxide solution. You should know that splits up an Li plus one and OH minus one. An HI solution, that splits up an H, uh, H plus one and I minus one. That should be pretty easy for you to remember. Okay, H2O liquid forms. H2O liquid is a pure liquid and so it stays all together. So which one of these out of here and out of here, which ones are the spectator ions? Well, since H2O is the only thing that forms on the product side, that means that and that are always going to be the spectator ions here. So what do we got? We got OH minus 1 plus H plus 1 what we're going to learn soon is that this is a strong base and this is a strong acid and every time a strong acid and a strong base react this is the net ionic equation OH minus plus H plus makes H2O liquid okay that's two down now let's look at two more all right Hit pause, work through it, see if you can figure it out. Come back and we'll look at these. Pause. Okay, you're back. So let's take a look. If a precipitate of Fe2CO3 3 forms, it's clear that the only thing that's on this side are these. Can you look at this and split these up into their individual ions. Well, if you know what the charge is on Fe, then that would be easy, but Fe is right smack dab in the middle of the transition metals, and you're not sure. Do you remember the charge on the CO3 ion? If you do, that's great. If not, you're going to have to figure it out. One thing for sure, you know you have two FEs, right? And you have three of the CO3s. But that's not it because this is a net ionic equation. So you have to figure out what those ion charges are. Because these are ions that are combining to make this ionic compound that's an insoluble precipitate. Can you tell what the charges are from this? Well, you know Cl is a uh, minus 1, right? 
Oops, minus 1. And there's 3 of them. So what's the charge have to be on the Fe? It's got to be a plus 3, doesn't it? To even out. That's good. You got two sodiums. Sodium is always a plus one, always, always, always. And then this one CO3 to even it out, two of these, that has to be a minus two, doesn't it? Okay. So now you know the charges. Carbonate is a minus two. Iron is a plus three. Do the charges even out here? Well, this is zero charge. Three times minus two. It's a total of minus 6. 2 times plus 3. It's a total of plus 6. Cancels out. This is the net ionic equation. You leave these charges off, you get it wrong. You put charges here, you get it wrong. Nothing to it. If you're having trouble with this stuff up here, you know what that means? You need to spend some time with Chapter 3. It's all about Chapter 3. Taking ions apart. We're taking compounds apart that are ionic into their individual ions and then taking them and putting them back together. All right, let's look one more time. Aqueous solutions of HClO4 and K2CO3 are mixed. CO2 and H2O liquid are formed. Okay, so CO2 gas and H2O liquid are formed. So that means all we can have on this side are C's and O's and H's, right? Okay. What does that stuff split up into? H plus ClO4 minus 1. What does this stuff split up into? K plus CO3 minus 2. See how similar this is to Na2CO3. So once you do a bunch of these, that's the same thing. Since it's only C's, O's, and H's, spectator ion. Spectator ion. Because the ClO4 stays all together. So, H plus is from one beaker. S carbonate ions from the other beaker. These have to combine to end up with a zero charge over here. So for sure we're going to need two of these, right? For every one of those. Because you have two hydrogens. One, two, three oxygens, one carbon. Everything balances out. If you know how to split guys up into their individual ions, these problems are easy when you believe it when they say these things are formed. If you're having trouble with that, Go back to chapter 3. Go back to the videos and check them out. Good luck. Keep working.